Hey everybody, Ben here from Cinderblock Studios. I'm back with another acrylic painting tutorial. Today we're doing something a little bit more advanced and we're going to be painting unique, magical energies and light. These. Stick around. Alright, so out here in front of me today I've laid out uh, just sort of a base to work on for each of these four different sort of magic light types of fire, water, lightning, and just straight up magic. Uh, I did, you can, and you can see my, my outline to these, I used some uh, micaceous iron oxide, it's a black paint with a little bit of a, with some mica flakes in it, and so you can kind of see my layout for these. I have certain floaty rocks and things like that, which should uh, help me illustrate these a little bit more. Material wise for this, oh, also this is just a piece of black gessoed uh, particle board. <coughs> Material wise, I've got a lot of different colors sitting out, as well as a handful of brushes. I've got uh, my regular liner brush, uh, a relatively small and thin flat, as well as just a round. I'm working relatively small scale, so I won't need a ton of brushes, or really a ton of different brushes for this either. I'm mostly probably gonna be leaning on the liner brush though. Color-wise, as always, uh, on the lower right-hand corner of the screen, you're gonna be seeing uh, me reaching for that in a separate little video. Uh, my colors for today, I've got some uh, titanium white, I've got some cad yellow medium, uh, Prussian blue, Viridian green. Now I should mention with the blue and the green, uh, if you happen to have phthalo blue and phthalo green, use those. They're probably going to be a lot better mixing for you. I may or may not grab some cobalt blue. Don't know yet. Uh, Quinacridone magenta. Uh, this is going to be to make a purple. If you happen to have, have it, happen to have a dioxazine, uh, that would be a good choice as well. As well as some cadmium red medium, and that's giving me a really nice wide range of colors to work with for each of these different types of magic. Now, as I'm laying these colors down out onto my palette, I do want to mention that unlike a lot of my other tutorials, which are really designed more for uh, for, for beginners, I will say that this tutorial is going to lean towards the more experienced painter. Uh, we're going to be using some really basic dry brushing techniques. So you might want to even consider this the dry brushing tutorial unofficially part three. But uh, this particular technique with the different colors and the uh, sort of really kind of different technique because we're focusing on sort of uh, basic uh, elements of design but taking them out in a bit of a different direction using uh, something unusual such as uh, magical energy. Uh, I talked about this a little bit in my, I think, uh, Fundamentals of Landscape Design, I'm going to say part one, uh, because I talked a bit about just using uh, different uh, uh, colors and different energies and light and the way light affects shadow and everything like that, and how regardless of what you're painting, that particular uh, move that you make in, in, in your work should still reflect actual reality. Uh, I at the time called it the uh, painter's version, the visual uh, suspension of disbelief. So it still has to be kind of accurate to whatever you're doing uh, in terms of how things work in nature, even if the thing you're working doesn't exist in nature like magic. Alright, I've also gotten a little bit of water off to the side as well. I'll be dipping to that. I just want to move this over here. Dip, that, dip for that uh, every now and then. So the first one on our <clears throat> section here is fire. Now when you put uh, an object, say, under a flame, actually I just realized how stupid that phrase is, under a flame, you're not putting it under a flame, you're putting it over a flame, whatever. If you put something uh, under a flame, the flame's going to try and bellow up and around it. Uh, uh, so you have maybe a, you take like a steel ball and stick it in a candle, with the flame's going to kind of push and try and get up and around it. We want that idea to exist within the magic of the rock as well. So I'm going to start uh, relatively dark actually. I just want to start with uh, some red, a little bit of our Quin magenta or just a violet color. You can really use, I, I have uh, some Quin violet, uh, a Quin red. I'm just looking for that little bit more of a purple tone. And I love Quin magenta because you're able to really mix it back and forth between uh, a nice red, a nice purple, or a, uh, a be beautiful orange as well. Um, it's a great color if you ever happen to manage to pick it up. Also, I use specifically Golden's Quinacridone Magenta, which is uh, pigment PR122. 
There are other colors that say quinacridone magenta, but they're not the same color, so do be aware of that. Alright. A little bit of a purpley undertone here. And if the, let's say my base flame is going to be on the bottom. So I'm going to highlight the edges of that, that stone. And this stone, that again, that uh, micaceous iron oxide, I just call it mica black. Um, it's going to, it creates a little bit of a sandy texture. So I'm going to be able to kind of get a little bit of like an outline on that. And if you were doing this over top of um, sort of a piece in a landscape, I would do this last. I would do this after you put your initial highlights and shadows on this. Um, that is, of course, if your initial highlights and shadows are coming from a different light source. Uh, if you're doing something where the piece is in the dark, uh, and maybe the magical energy is your light source, then you can kind of push things in a little bit uh, different directions and just use uh, just use the, the magic to, to give yourself some light. Okay, so we'll probably trail it up in the center. And it'll envelop and come around. So we'll get a little bit on the bottom of the rug. And I'm going to split, split that and bring it up as well. So you don't really see the edges, uh, if anything, at, at all. And it comes again, up again, trying to, trying to push itself up to get more oxygen. Yeah, with each of these, uh, even even once we get to the the more fantasy one and towards the end, <coughs> excuse me, uh, you really have to think about the physics of the of whatever you know object and whatever thing you're making. Let's kind of skip up that up a little bit, again around that edge, push it up. Over edge. And I'm going to start tapering it more at the top. It's going to maybe come out the edges a bit. Out, up. You can kind of get a little more freedom in this. Treat it more like that candle flame. Like so. I might do that on the bottom too. Just on some of these edges, of it trying to work its way up. Okay, so that's our sort of base. Now I'm going to go back into the red a little bit <coughs> and get a little bit of yellow. Create sort of a nice deep orange. And of course, if you want to go for something like a like a warm hot flame, uh, one find yourself some reference pictures. I'm not. Quite sure of those colors myself. It's, I know it's like a blue, like a blue yellow white maybe. Um, so you could, in theory, for the hottest part of your flames, put a little touch of blue in there. But uh, I'm going to keep it simple today, and we'll work sort of from the inside out uh, in terms of uh, the shape of the flame because I don't want to destroy that buff zone, that little bit of a that red in the edges. Uh, if you saw dry brushing part two where I did the nebula, it's kind of the same technique as that I'm going, leaving some of the glow on the outside edge and just slowly, slowly working from the inside out, just tiny, tiny little bits uh, each time to kind of preserve the glow on the outside while still, uh, still kind of having that... Uh, so you have the light, but the light still kind of fades as it goes out, is what I'm saying. After this layer, <coughs> I will likely switch to the liner brush to get a little more detail in this. Uh, when it touches the underside of this rock, it probably won't be as hot uh, because it's transferring and it's, it's going to cool out as soon as it hits that object. So I want to maybe do a little bit less on the bottom. And maybe toward the top of this one, it's a little brighter. That was probably a little too much, that's alright. 
little less down here. More right there. like so. <clears throat> now, when we switch the, to the liner brush, I'm going to grab just a tiny bit of the red and go mostly into our yellow. More yellow in that. Thin it out a bit. Maybe even grab a tiny bit of white <clears throat> just to lighten it up. <clears throat> I apologize for clearing my throat so much. I'm fighting a, fighting a sore throat right now, so then again, we go uh, from the in, inside of the flame out, very minimally this time now, because we just want that to stand out a tiny bit. And we're thinking about the shape of those flames. The way a flame is sort of uh, almost like a drop shape, even. <coughs> Right about like that. <clears throat> and personally, I think for like a fi finishing touch, I would come in just with a little bit of white and give the center a nice bright dot for each of the tiers. Like so. Now once you kind of establish that as a base, you can kind of come back in and maybe give a little bit more warmth to the rest of uh, the rest of the color. I'm going to mix some of that the orange that I had with some of my Quinn Magenta. And you can just kind of push where that light would cast a bit more on those rocks. Especially more down in the base. <clears throat> so that is our fire energy. Now, the second one is water energy. Again, think about the physics of it. Think about wa how water works, how if you take uh, a couple of objects <clears throat> and pour over a big bucket of water, what happens? Well, uh, where, wherever it sits on top, wherever the water's coming from, it's probably, I would say, just sort of emanating from this upper one, maybe like a spring or a well in the center of the top, and then it's just kind of drip and fall. <clears throat> so that's exactly what we want to have happen. Uh, now, if it was a fast stream, uh, that water would probably cascade way over the edge of this. I want this to feel a little more, a little more subtle, a little more uh, basic, uh, and, and maybe a, a weaker flow. So I'm going to start with just some straight out of the tube Prussian blue, and just start dropping in the flow. And I will likely have some drips coming down the front face of the rock. Think about it. Think about your objects really uh, individually, as as their own 3D entity, and, and you have to be able to really kind of imagine where those drips might fall. So if we think of this maybe like <clears throat> if, if you cut a hole in a ball and then forced water out of the top, it's just going to run down all, every different side. And so we want to have that illusion of all of those bits of water kind of falling down the edge. Now at the bottom, kind of would convene in one spot, depending on the flow. So maybe it pulls a little bit and then pours down again. Drip. Drip that way, drip this way. Pulls there and connects. And even have a couple of side drips in other areas. 
Then that drip will just run down the rock. In different places. Once we get the liner brush, we'll be able to kind of push the shapes of those a little bit more. But again, just looking for that base glow, and then maybe it turns into a stream at the bottom. So again, just a little bit of base color to kind of get ourselves going. I'm, I'm actually going to switch to the liner brush early. And then for my sort of mid-tone color, it's going to be a mix of the Thalo, uh, Thalo Prussian Blue. It would be Thalo if I happen to have it. Uh, some of my Viridian Green, just to create a nice sort of bluish green color. And I'm just going to hint with a touch of white just to brighten it up. Keep it nice and thin. <coughs> okay. So again, like the red, sort of center outward. I can afford to be a little bit brighter, I think. So it flows. We're using really the <coughs> fluidity of the paint as well as that that super thin extension of the liner brush. Uh, to get a little bit more of a, that flowing idea to it. My hands shake a little bit, <clears throat> so I'm able to kind of use that to my advantage um, and just kind of let uh, let that wiggle and let the brush wiggle a little bit. Let me get a little more higher concentration on the top of this, I think. So I have a couple drips maybe down in here. Culminates and arcs. Until it hits there. <coughs> Pull some drips. A little more, a little more water here. Just keep keep your paint flowing. Especially with the uh, Especially when using a liner brush and doing details like this, you really got to keep things moving. And think about gravity. Think about where the water's going to flow and pool on your rocks. <coughs> Hits that and just runs. Runs down the edges. Now, if these were further apart, I might even pull off and make these individual drips. Oh, actually, I'll do this on the side to show you. So I'd come down and maybe like like this, and then have a drip. That's a terrible looking drip, but whatever. And then it kind of hits the surface again. So I might I might even do something like that, or even even push that shape, get it th like real thin before it turns into a drop like that. These are just other options for you to do. I'm just going to wipe that away that already dried. That's okay. <clears throat> Again, it flows downward, trickles down, maybe turns into separate, more separate streams towards the base, and then kind of becomes a little bit of a pool at the bottom. About like that. <coughs> and again, final layer. I'm going to come in with the white. You just give it a little extra highlighting. So we want that again, sort of, it's sort of a magical energy, so you want you know, the light kind of coming from the center, so to speak. Or the center of wherever the energy is. So any of those high stress points. Especially where the connections are. just to make them stand out a little bit more. So there we have fire energy and water energy. Like, all right, what's next? Electrical energy, lightning energy. Uh, now, I will say that for the lightning side, you could absolutely use blue. Um, but for day, today, I want the uh, stages here to look very different. These, these examples look very, very different from each other, so I don't want to use this blue and white thing again, but I absolutely could. In fact, I was thinking about this just now. I think the water probably could have been a little greener, but 
that's something for another day. <coughs> so, I'm going to go straight into the yellow. And maybe mix just with a hint of the, of actually the Prussian blue just to kind of tone that down a little bit. Not enough to make it like super green, but I've also got a little bit of residual red on the brush, on the back of this brush, so I just want to tone it down just ever so slightly. Okay, so now in thinking about uh, these next two, they're going to operate very similar to each other. So for the lightning, I want these little orbs to kind of be the, uh, sort of the source of the energy, and then this thing to act sort of as a lightning rod where these things can jump apart. That's actually too bright to start. i got to thin this out quite a little, little bit more here. Uh, i got to just get it to kind of graze around. Uh, very thin, very small amount of paint here. Uh, this, <coughs> In this instance, I'm definitely doing more dry brushing. Uh, just to kind of give it a little bit of a glow. And these are going <coughs> to connect in different places on this rocks. So probably here, I'll put a little, in here a little bit, down in here. That's about all I'm going to do in terms of that base. <coughs> I might go back in and highlight some stuff later, but really this is all about just getting that uh, lightning to look right and then we can worry about the, the where it is casting lighting in just a little bit. So I'm going to get a mix of some of our yellow and some of our white. I'll put some blue in there too. Not a problem. Just needs to be a nice bright color. Rather than doing more incremental stages, there's basically going to be two layers. There's going to be a distinct lighting and then maybe a little bit of a highlight on top of that and then we'll play with light uh, and, and where that pushes in either direction. So lightning and uh, the electricity is more chaotic than, I would say, fire or water. Uh, but it still has properties in, in which uh, it, it works too. Uh, the one in particular that I really try and keep myself in mind when working with uh, sort of electrical energy is it will make its jumps when certain objects are close to each other. So think about uh, a Tesla coil or a magnet. Uh, you get something close enough, it's just going to make that jump for you. That's exactly what you want to do with the lightning, is, is you want to look for those areas that are close enough to us. So I'm thinking, this is a bit of a stretch, this will be probably a bit thinner. But this close connection here, this close connection between the rocks and, and, uh, and, the, and the tower, uh, anything else uh, might be a, a, a more of a stretch to get there. So I'm going to kind of almost create like an outline to these rocks first. And uh, push maybe a little bit of an extra line or two in. Thin this out a bit more. Really looking for that thin flow uh, as before. A little bit of a zigzag in here. Same with this one. A bit of an outline. A couple of little internal zigzags. Just enough to kind of get my get me started and get my brain working a bit. Again, you'll, you'll see in just a second that this will all kind of come together a bit. It ripples, ripples, and goes inward a bit. All right. So we have these connection points. And at that point, then you can kind of just take it and wiggle it back and forth a little until you get that line. Now, <laughs> lightning lines, a lot of people just want to do the old-fashioned zigzag like that. Not really the best look. Um, you look at uh, image stills, of the way people have captured lightning, it kind of comes out at first, but it wiggles back and forth a lot more than that, and it'll branch down a whole lot towards the base. So wherever it's going to connect down to, in this case, uh, this particular pillar, it'll branch out towards the bottom of that. Or at least the edge of that, I should say. So that connection point and all the wiggles. 
Wiggles! <coughs> Look at all the wiggles. I don't know how many of you will get that reference. <laughs> really trying to push that flow on the painting. Just back and forth, back and forth. And you can kind of jump it back and forth as well, even up towards this top. Um, really, I'm just looking for those co just connection points. Occasionally you might have one that just kind of goes off in a different direction, but that's all right. Wiggle, wiggle. little connections to where that would actually end up being. <coughs> and again, you can push with the lighting and stuff with different colors, uh, so long as you're not, you know, I would say, pushing too far in either direction. It still has to, again, be believable. That one's a little screwed up. Come down from this side. It's up to you to decide where that's going to make that connection to, but again, think about it logically. Yeah, and I wanted to connect these lower two as well. So I'm going to get a little extra here. And Connection here. Yeah, push that internal color more here now that I know where those connections are. I can kind of use the brush and line them in, get a little more light on those edges. About like that. I get my actually for the first time I'm getting the round brush. I'm not going to soak get any water though. I'm just going to get a nice dry brush of that that bright yellowish white color, and then use that to push a little extra light into here. Lightning tends to make things bright in one area, especially right where the strikes are happening. You get a little bit of a glow elsewhere, but no, not usually as much than right where the, that little epicenter of the strike is. Get a little bit of a, just a dry yellow. Push that up in the back here. I'm not gonna thin that out a little bit, that was way too much. Kleenex. Pull some of that away. That's better. Yeah, just to thin that out. Uh, I totally ripped some of that. That's alright. There we have our electrical energy. Actually, one more thing with that is the, the, the just pure, the, the pure white bit. Uh, right where you want that. Uh, again, with, with any of these highlights, it's, it's really where the viewer's eye is going to end up being. So you have the ability to put a focal point in with the white. And then if you screwed up on any of your little wiggles, then you can uh, correct them with the white and, and have that one or two maybe that's right on top that you really want the person to see. Like where's your focal point really at for each of them? It might be one, just one, might just be one bolt. Uh, you could actually do this, again, like I'm putting them here and here, I could just do one big bolt, like coming down, even down from the sky, connecting all of them. Uh, uh, think about physics, think about the way light works, and you'll be fine and be able to create some really cool stuff. And again, this is very non-traditional landscape stuff. This is absolutely fantasy, but this is the stuff that I love to do so much. Also, I will mention that this is actually the first time I've done this in paint. <laughs> I, I have been practicing this with uh, colored ink pens for a number of years, but I actually actually have never managed to do this in paint. But uh, the technique translates uh, beautifully uh, 
and that's why I was at least confident enough to talk about it today. So the fourth, our, our fourth, yeah, fourth last one is just pure magical energy. Now, unlike these where we thought about the physics, magic kind of does whatever it wants to. It's magic. It's you, you can you can push it in whatever direction you want. You can make it a combination of two of them. You can have it kind of flowing both up and down at the same time. It it really kind of lets you just have the freedom to do it. But I think if you're gonna push things so far into just doing a pure, like a soft magic kind of uh, feel, then what you want to do is uh, make it very different from all the other ones and choose a color that comparatively isn't supernatural, or rather not not isn't natural but is supernatural. Uh, so maybe like a purple or a green in this case. I'm going to use um, by Quinacridone Magenta as the base. I'm going to add a little bit of blue to that to make a nice dip, deep, rich purple. And, I'm, and rather than doing my base color with flat, I'm going to do the base color with the round. Just to get a little variety in here. So again, like the uh, electricity, the orbs are going to be uh, sort of the source of the, the, the power. And I'm just going to do a full round outline on these. Maybe even push some of that color into the center. This is the one we really get to kind of have fun on. Don't have to think, you don't have to, well you have to think a little bit, but that doesn't ruin the work uh, just because you were focused on trying to think about the physics of it, you can just kind of do whatever you want. And I'll push some of that color into the base here of these. Probably end up doing some back and forth connections here. So put a little more in the center of that. All right. Now, I'm just going to use that as my base color and again go right into my liner. So my brighter purple is just going to be focusing more on the Quinn Magenta with just a hint of that blue underneath. And you can mix a very similar color to this with uh, some blues and some reds, not all of them. I like this color because it's a convenience color. It's a good mixing color, again. This is why this is not a beginner tutorial. You kinda, at, least, at least for me and my methods, you kind of have to have a, maybe a more expansive palette than you might otherwise have. A little bit of that, a little bit of blue. Alright, that's a nice purpley magic color. Nice and bright. Now, again, with my initial sketches, uh, fire flows up, water flows down, lightning hits the connection points, magic does whatever the hell it wants to. So it's going to make connections wherever it, wherever it feels like making connections. So I'm just going to start with, uh, similar to the, to the lightning, just an outline. Um, and then from the outline, I'm going to work both in and outward with whatever it does. Push some in. Creating little internal blips. It kind of wraps around this top one a bit more. So you really see the shape of the, the object. This will kind of come almost all the way around. Because it's going to have connection points all over the place. If I was doing this on an actual piece, I'd be rotating the canvas constantly. But for you guys, I don't want to make you, make you dizzy. I just won't have as round of a shape as I probably could. That's fun. This one. I'll let you bring it up. Maybe let that edge be a little darker. And just, again, pushing this around. 
All right. So these connections, they're gonna they're gonna be close. They're gonna be far. All kind of wiggles. All kind of different directions. Especially the ones that kind of just flutter out into nowhere. You have ones that can maybe go way out and then come back. These big arcs, they just do whatever they want. So this one comes out and around and then connects down here even. It's your, it's your magic system, you can let it be whatever it wants to be. Just push lines in whatever direction you want them to go. With all the freedom in the world with, with uh, a, pure, a pure magic. So maybe we have one even that's on top, it goes from one to one, one like that. We'll, we'll use that uh, a white highlight, light, highlight layer on top of that one to make sure it's, it sticks to the front of the viewer's attention. One here. Then it starts connecting down here in whatever way it wants to. Again, keep my paint flowy. If you happen to have a fluid paint, this would be a lot easier, but I don't. The only thing I would say is would be a general rule for this is try not to go overboard with the wiggles and all the little things, tendrils and whatever you want to call them. Uh, just because you don't want to overexcite the uh, your, your viewer's attention, you want to still kind of keep it at least tame enough. That it's not going crazy. Sometimes, sometimes, I mean, I kind of, I did, I went a little nuts. I probably could have toned this down by at least 10 or 20 lines already. Sometimes less is more. So I'll connect one this way. All right, I'm going to do maybe one or two in between. Maybe even make them like sound waves a little bit. Out like that. Now again, I come back in with a, an upper layer, white. Maybe have a little bit of residual uh, uh, purple on the brush, but not a big deal. So we want to make sure at least this one in front is in front and is connecting those two spots on the rock. And I think I might be a little more sparing with this stuff. Keep it more simple for those, those upper layers. One, two, and I think maybe even just one more here. It connects these and also goes down. And a really thin one in here. About like that. So there we have distinctly four different types of sort of magical energy that you can use to highlight and create new light and new and unique landscapes in your piece. I love playing with fantasy stuff like this and I love teaching it because it's not something you're going to see every day. It's not something you're going to see in every landscape and if you can sneak one of these into your paintings I can guarantee you you're going to create a piece that's worlds differently or worlds different than anything you've ever created. Um, this is why I love to paint, is to create these unique and interesting worlds and uh, really kind of make something that people probably haven't really seen before. So, as always, if you learned something in this video, just thought it was interesting, go ahead and hit that like button. Just consider supporting me on Patreon and get subscribed if you're not already. And this has been Center Blog Studios, and I'll see you guys next time. These really are. They're, they're cool. i, I got to paint something with these soon. It's neat.